Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm sharing some happy mail um, using the very rainy day from Longfond. And I'm going to use my Copic markers today to create my background. Now, if you like this card and you want to see more like this, um, it's a process. Uh, I definitely want to try this more and more because I think that there is a whole world out there with Copic coloring that I just tiny, small step, stepped into it. Um, the tiny steps, baby steps here. Um, so that's going to be a lot of coloring today. Now, in the past, I already uh, tried some copy coloring in the background, so definitely check out those videos if you're interested. And if you want to particularly see another video um, where I did a rainy background, I did that on the Crafty Meraki YouTube channel. So um, if I don't forget, that I probably will. I will link to it in the description box if you haven't seen it. Um, but I will probably forget it. Uh, so if you are curious and you cannot find it, definitely let me know. Um, and then I will make sure to get that link there uh, if I forget it. Um, but I sort of did this the same way as, as then, but I'm using other colors. So I stamped out my image on top of an A2 size panel. Um, and I also created a mask because I'm first going to do the background here. Um, and so uh, I'm using some Inka Dinka Do stamping mask paper. I'm adhering it really carefully right on top of my image. And then I am taking the Rectangle Extraordinaire stencil from my favorite things as a guide. Something that is important to know there is that you won't have a crisp rectangle if you're looking for that. Why? Because your ink will still go underneath your stencil with uh, alcohol markers. Um, or at least that's what I experience, but I don't mind. It's sort of organic, if we can call it like that. Um, so I just go with it. Um, why do I use a stencil? Just because, as I said, I'm stepping into that new area using Copic markers on backgrounds. Um, not yet drawing a lot of things because I'm not someone that is drawing things. I need steps. Um, but just by doing it this way and using a stencil, I don't have that whole A2 size card panel that I need to fill with markers. So that's a way for me to limit the amount of background that I need to, to create. And it is also something that makes it more comfortable for me to not immediately try to do a complete A2 size. You can definitely do it. Um, there is, it's an option. Um, and uh, this image, for example, is large enough to also cover a complete A2 sized panel uh, with this kind of background. But just for me, for my personal um, sort of well, comfort zone creating thing, um, I tend to use a stencil. You can also use a circle or a square. I already used a circle in the past, um, not for a rainy background, but um, you can use any stencil you have that is sort of in shape uh, if you want to start like me and just try it out, but limit yourself in a way. Then about the markers that I chose for the background, you know this combination if you watched my YouTube channel. Um, it's a combination that works, uh, the BGs. Um, these markers are really close to each other and um, so the BG78, 75, 72, that's a combination that I use quite often. I also looked for a, um, a lighter uh, marker that would go with them and so I took the BG10. That's all I did and I just made sure that I had my card base, well no, card panel, in an angle so that I could use the same strokes every time. Um, I noticed in other cards that I saw on Instagram that I just like the idea whenever someone is creating a rainy background that it's sort of falling straight down. Um, if you prefer in an angle then just twist your panel so that you can always keep that panel like that and then use the same angle of your well, stripes that you are sort of drawing in. And then I decided to use a bit of yellows um, on the bottom just to have it sort of, well there is a bit of sun but it's really far away. Um, and actually this kind of background is what I did with the card that I shared on the Crafty Meraki YouTube channel. I used completely other colors so definitely if you want more inspiration check it out. 
um because i really really love that card it was my first attempt to a rainy background and i i couldn't be happier with that attempt um so i wanted to try it again but i didn't want to use the same colors um so that's why i use these um removing my mask once i'm happy with the background and a tip that i got from you guys was to use a heat gun because in the past i've ruined the card while removing the masking um, paper sometimes it's just really really sticky and if you want to avoid that from the start you can always first add it to the palm of your hand or anything like that uh, just to get a bit of the stickiness off um, I didn't do that in advance because while well, I had this tip from you um, so I wanted to test it out and indeed using a heat gun definitely helps but still take your time um, so in case I am going over the masking paper too often you must be aware that there is a chance that there is a bit of bleeding going through your paper the paper masking paper in general is not made for copy coloring so it could give in at a certain point now in this case I didn't went over it that often or only with small light colors and so I didn't have any bleeding through otherwise I just first go in with my colorless blender and make sure to get rid of the darkest colors that I will not be able to remove by adding my my colors of choice uh, so that's a tip as well so I'm starting with the bear. Um, I have a sort of a brown combination that I use very often and you will recall it. It's the E33, E53, E51. Now I wanted to go a bit darker so I took the E37 which goes great with that combination. But for this card I, I saw that I also had E34. Now let me tell you E34 is as good as E33. So I really love this combination. Uh, it might be that you just have a slightly different color than a combination that is shown by someone online. Um, definitely try out the colors that you have first before buying all those colors. Um, personally I find it really expensive and I'm also just building up my marker markers collection as I go. Um, but I have certain markers that apparently once you use them and give them a try are quite similar to the ones that I already had and then maybe that's just a bit maybe that's a shame because I could have invested in a marker that I don't have yet as a color combination so well um, something that I also wanted to say was well a bit of stickiness here so I just used my adhesive eraser just a slight bit uh, to make sure that I got everything off um, I'm going to use this purple I love the RV69 is one of the most gorgeous purpley, violety, pinkish colors that are out there, in my opinion. And I also have some markers that I use all the time with it. Um, and then I need a tip to tip method, but everything goes really well. So I wanted to use that. Why? Because I also know from the past, from other cards that I made, that this purple goes really well with the BG combination that I used for the sky. So that's how this all came together, the decisions of choice, uh, of color choices and everything like that. Um, about the grounding, for now I didn't add any grounding. It was something that I didn't do either with the card that I created for the Crafty Meraki YouTube channel. Um, and I didn't end up adding grounding because it wasn't that necessary. Um, and here personally I find that just leaving it wide also gives you the illusion of here the ground is starting you know so if you're uncomfortable with adding grounding with adding a bit of shadow underneath the feet or anything like that I've been there and still from time to time I just skip it because I think well I already like it like this maybe I will ruin it if you're not sure just leave it because it's gorgeous as well uh, but today I will add some grounding and later on you will see why I think but I just had an issue with the sentiment that I was going to add it was just not fitting with the image without grounding so i will get back to you uh, about that when we are there and here you can definitely see the tip to tip that i had to use to get a blend between my rv34 and my rv69 um, i love this combination i also took the v99 here which is sort of pretty dark and at the same time it's also sort of grayish purplish and i like it 
and I was really surprised by seeing it with the RV69 because if you add it on top of it, it's, it really darkens the color. Um, but if you add it just without anything like I did on the umbrella, those parts, those tiny parts, I'm not going to add any shadows there. Um, it's sort of grayish and I like it. I don't think I use them often. I don't use the Vs very often, the violets, because I find the really hard uh, color family markers to get the blend that I want. So that's why I try to avoid them. But as you can see from time to time, it's really gorgeous. So for the umbrella, there was a bit of a thinking process. I really love the purple, but I didn't have an immediate combination in my head that would go with it. And then I thought, well, yellow and purple, they really reinforce each other always whenever I use them on a card. It just jumps off the card, those colors. And at the same time, this yellow really goes well with the background. So we have a yellow umbrella. I think it would be also gorgeous to switch the colors around. Not that I, I mean a yellow background, but I mean a yellow jacket, a yellow, yellow boots, or you can do the boots in the same color as the umbrella. I think that would be gorgeous as well. If you're like me and you like to, to have those colors returning, that's definitely a way to go. Um, after doing the ink blending, my first go with my markers here, uh, I just found there wasn't enough uh, drama in the, in the shadowing like I had with the coat. So I just added a few yellow-red markers to help me with the difference in the shadowing. So that's why I just took them. Sometimes with your second layer or third, you will just add other markers in because they will help with the end result. Just did a bit of cold grays for the umbrella and then I zoomed out and it was time to figure out the sentiment. If the bear was a bit more to the left, I would have added the sentiment right next to the, the boot. But uh, it wasn't, my image was quite centered, so later on I will do the sentiment. But as you can see, I was a bit stuck, so what do we do when we get stuck? We just move along and we try to, to avoid the situation that is hard. <laughs> And first start on adding all of the rain. Therefore I'm using a white jelly roll pen. I just have these in my craft room. I don't have any other white pens. Um, so I cannot compare them but it works so I will just add those. Just keep in mind that whenever you add white jelly roll pen and it's not dry and you go into it with your hand that you will smudge it. So that's why I was extra careful. Um, and then the area where it comes right uh, on top of the umbrella, it's always a bit of a... Well, it scares me. I must admit that the same with the other card I created, it was a pain. Um, so uh, what I noticed was just, just draw a bit on it and then um, add a bit of splatters by just tapping. Just doing some, some dots sort of, but really close to each other in a cluster kind of way. Uh, and you can add as many as you want to. Definitely there is way more space than what I used on the umbrella. But I don't know where to, to stop. So I just, at a certain point, I feel safe. And I just think, okay, stop right here. You can add more if you want to, but you don't need to. So you just have to figure it out a bit yourself. And then there where the bear is no longer underneath the umbrella, I also try to add a few uh, raindrops on top of the coat. Because that way... Um, well, maybe it looks more realistic. We are talking about the bear with a, with a jacket and with boots and an umbrella. So I think we are past the realistic point of view. Uh, but, but I try. Um, so yeah, adding a few bigger raindrops that are falling really fast. And then a few smaller, just play a bit with, with sizes. And then on the bottom, I try to do sort of the same on some places as I did with the umbrella just add some raindrops that are falling right there and then just some 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 dots really clustered together so that you have sort of all those feathers that are going upwards again so if you think that you can add a sentiment how it is then you do that personally I find it's really gorgeous and also with the white it stands out uh, so that's what you can do that's what I did in the past but for today, as I said, the bear is in the center and I was, well, it was a struggle to get the sentiment where I wanted it to be. So I thought if I create some grounding now, 
then uh, I can just add it inside of the image and everything will be more cohesive with each other. So that's why I also took some extra BG and, well, BGs. Also some underneath the feet. I don't know if that was necessary, but I just did. Um, so that's what I did. Really simple. I'm also leaving the middle part white because there is some sort of a light thing, no? Um, so that's what I did. Just some streaks from the left and right side. And then I'm also adding some white jelly roll pen here. Um, and it's all a learning curve. Really, there are no wrongdoings, I think, here with adding the white jelly roll pen. You just need to be convinced about what you're doing. Um, so, I'm going to add the sentiment on the bottom of my scene and I'm going to center it. Now, I wasn't sure where to place it, so I took a piece of acetate that I have in the back of my Misty and that way you can sort of play a bit with placement. Now, you can love the placement of the acetate and your sentiment is straight. You can always uh, just move your cardstock underneath. Just make sure that your acetate is in a corner when you stamp it out as well as when you place your card underneath in the correct way. Uh, but in my case, it, it needed to go higher so then what my card wasn't hanging inside of the misty it was overhanging so i didn't want that so i just repositioned tried it out again with the acetate and stamped it out when i was happy with it so that is sort of my card actually i'm going to add this panel on top of a card base and that's it as i always say and i truly truly mean this whatever i can do you can do um it's a learning curve for everyone and one step at a time. But I definitely think that you got this. I have the combinations on my blog post. If that can help you in any way, definitely check that out. I always try to add them there really clear for each part of the image. Um, so yeah, I hope that you will give it a try if you're interested in doing backgrounds with your markers. Uh, and definitely let me know if, if you tried it out. I am so curious to see what you create. Uh, which combinations you use. Um, so thank you so much for stopping by, taking the time to watch this video. I hope it can help you in any way. And I wish you all an incredible day and I'll be back soon. Bye!